In this video, I'll talk through the actual technique of U substitution. So in the previous problem, or in the previous video, we did this problem just using straight up antiderivatives. And now you're going to see, I'm choosing a specific example that's easy to follow on purpose. Uh, after teaching U substitution on this example, you, you might very well be wondering, why on earth would we use antiderivative, why on earth would we use U substitution instead of just using pattern matching like we did with antiderivatives? in order to solve this question. And, and indeed, that's the point I was trying to make in the first two videos. There is no reason to use U substitution on a problem this simple. There is a case to be made for specific problems or types of problems where U substitution becomes necessary. This is not one of them, but it's, I think, an easy one to teach substitution with. So how do you recognize substitution? First of all, the derivative of part of a problem has to be in the problem itself or you have to be off by a constant. So what you do is first recognize what you would differentiate and what part is in the problem. And again, remember that you could be off by a constant. Constants are free in calculus, we're okay. So the exact derivative doesn't have to be present, but a constant multiple of it has to be present in the question itself. So let u equal to three minus x, because if I find the derivative of three minus x, the derivative is negative one, which is a constant multiple that I'm off by, and that's okay. Now there's nothing special about u, uh, the, the letter u. This could be called t substitution, this could be called l substitution. For some reason, u tends to be a common variable that's used for substitution, because we don't really use u for something else. It's, a, it's an available variable, that's why we choose it. But again, inherently, there's nothing special about the letter U. You could use PQR. It doesn't matter what letter you use, as long as you're consistent. So first, you start off by recognizing what U is going to be. Then you take the derivative of both sides with respect to X. So if I take the derivative of U with respect to X, I will get DU DX equals, and then if I take the derivative of the right-hand side with respect to x, I'll get negative 1. Pause the video here if you don't know what I did. Make sure you go back to implicit differentiation and review why it is that this worked out the way it did. Now, this even though we've spent the entire semester saying that this is not a fraction, and it isn't, it's beyond the scope of this course as to why for the next five seconds we can treat this as a fraction. So only at this time multiply the dx over to the other side. So you get du equals negative 1 dx. Now the question becomes, do you see exactly this in the problem that you were given? I see a dx, but I don't see a negative dx. So what I'm going to do is take the negative and move it over to the other side. So I'm going to divide the du over by negative 1 and get dx. So to recap, before we get too far ahead, we let u equal to 3 minus x. We took the derivative of both sides with respect to x. And then I multiplied the dx over to the other side. I then ask myself the question, is this present exactly in the problem? If it is, great. If not, then make sure that the right-hand side matches whatever the question's giving me. So here, the question's only giving me a dx and nothing else. So I'm going to take the negative 1 and divide it over to the other side. At this stage, we're ready to go from X land to U land. And this is the crucial part. This is the part where a lot of students will make mistakes. The whole idea behind U substitution is that you're changing the variable entirely. You're going from living the problem or from the problem living in X land, meaning all the variables are X's, to the problem now living in U land where all the variables are U's. So in order to make the change, to go from x land to u land, everything that looks like an x has to turn into a u. You cannot mix x's and u's. Everything has to be completely separate. So either you're in u land or you're in x land. You can't say, oh, part of my body's in x land and part of my body's in u land. All of you has to be in one part, not the other. So dx, I can replace with du over negative 1. And this portion, 3 minus x, we had said that this was u to begin with. So when I convert this integral 
from X land to U land, I'm going to write U raised to the power 10. There's no X there, so that can come along as it is. And then instead of DX, I'm going to get DU over negative one. Now I can take this negative one because it's in the denominator and I can move it out of the integral because it's a constant multiple. So I'm just gonna put a negative on the outside. And then I have u to the 10 du. At this stage, what you've done is basically made the integral slightly easier to find. The whole idea behind u substitution is you swap a problem that maybe you cannot solve for one that you do know how to solve in a different country. So you go from x land to u land. In u land, you say, hey, this is actually quite simple. I can definitely integrate u to the 10th. So the antiderivative of u to the 10th would be u to the 11th over 11 plus c. And now the problem is a lot of students will leave that as that and then they'll be marked wrong. This, this would be a zero on the AP exam because if you go to x from x land to u land, you have to go back to x land as well. So this would be the same as negative. Now what was u to begin with? u was three minus x. So we have to substitute that back in. So it would be negative, the quantity three minus x to the 11th over 11 plus c. Now if we scroll up, keep this in mind, right here, we got the exact same answer. I'm going to pause this video because I'm going to run out of time in two minutes. I'll see you guys in the next video.